All right, boys and girls and children of YouTube, I'm trying to make a commitment to make more of these Mega Squirt videos. I want to try maybe do one of them a week, try to keep up with uh, showing you guys how to use them and everything. So today I'm just going to show the basics of like how it gets connected, basically. Once you have everything connected in the car, I showed some of that. I'll show more of that. How do you connect to the Mega Squirt ECU itself? Well, the MS1 that I always use has a PC COM port. It's a 9 pin. Also called a RS-232 or a DB9 or all of the above. And what you'll use is the best thing you should do is have a laptop with a port on the side of it that basically looks like this. That's the best thing you could have is a COM port built into the laptop. A hardware COM port works the best. Absolutely the best. This is uh, something different. I'll get to that in a second. Basically what most places will give you or what they will suggest is something like this. It's USB because most newer laptops don't have a COM port. It goes USB to COM port and in my opinion this stuff is junk. This stuff doesn't work that great. In my experience using it, it seems to corrupt the programming on the Megasquare board sometimes and it will act funny or uh, weird, weird things will happen basically. That's just my experience. Some people might not have a problem with them. This is another one. Uh, this is like a Radio Shack. Giga, it's called Gigabyte or something like that is the name of the company. Same thing. It's USB 9 pin. It's just longer, but they're all junk. <laughs> In my opinion, I don't like them at all. This you can get off Newegg. This is if your, co your computer has a PC card, laptop. This is a PC card slot. You can see right here in the side, that's where the PC card goes. Pretty nice. It has two hardware COM ports on it. There really isn't, in my opinion, anything better you can get than this. This, this works every time. Has no issues. You can, a lot of times if you have the USB one in and something gets disconnected, you need to restart the damn computer or do weird shit. This guy, you can unplug and plug this in and out, no problem. You can take the the cord here and unplug it and unplug it while it's running right into here and it just it just says disconnected and you plug it in in two three seconds it goes oh, I'm connected again it has no problem it's awesome it has almost no issue at all what we're gonna do is throw that guy in and then uh, I will show you quick what it looks like when you connect yeah, you take this guy you plug it into this guy you get it going and then I have the stimulator board here that shows you what it looks like. I think I last programmed this particular Megasquirt board with, uh, once you have, I use Tuner Studio. Once you have Tuner Studio up, once you build a project, I also send these projects out to people if they want to use them. So I will open up the Fairmont one. And once that's open, you get like the main display, which is what's pretty neat is if you connect the power now to this guy, What Tuner Studio will do here is it's reading the controller settings and it makes a difference chart. And it's like, hey, you know what? Two weeks ago when you connected me, this shit was different. It's pretty neat. You can, If you're panicking here, you can hit exit and go offline. This is a simple option. Use controller settings that are already there. It'll download the controller settings to the laptop. This setting will take what's on the laptop tune-wise and put it on the Megasquirt. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hit... Send current Tuner Studio settings. It downloads all the settings to the Megasquirt box. And what you'll see here is, this is like a standard dashboard that I use. You see RPM, coolant temp, battery voltage, TPS, uh, vacuum and boost, air fuel, manifold temp, which is also incoming air temperature. And uh, a lot of times I'll switch this one around between a bunch of stuff. This particular time I was testing uh, acceleration enrichment, so I wanted to see when it was coming on and off. Uh, once it's going, basically before you start the car, you should go into like engine constants and you build a VE table here. You give it a bunch of options like V8, what map sensor you're using, a whole bunch of things. If you're doing a Turbo LS, I will give you a base map that will basically start your car almost every time. Other than that, you're going to have to do some reading. If you're doing something other than a Turbo LS, these settings will vary greatly. If you're using a different size injector, 
It has different dead time. I mean, a lot of complicated stuff that you don't need to bother yourself with. If you just copy someone's setup and get their tune, it'll get you going way faster. And then in in here, basically, we'll go over some quick things. If you if you're already connected here, if you go into the VE table, that's basically how much fuel it's getting at a certain amount of time. The easiest way you can explain this is this is the map sensor in KPA, not a PSI. And about 100 is the threshold for boost. So below this is vacuum, and above this is boost. Uh, Megasquirt 1 here comes with a 2.5 bar map sensor built in. It will read, depending on your elevation, roughly 22 pounds of boost, 23 pounds of boost. And it's 255 kPa. 100 is 0. 150 area here, right above 140, is about 7 pounds of boost, 7, 8. And then 200 is 14, 15 pounds, so 255 is lower 20s. And what happens is, like a ZR1 cam or a decent stock cam, it's going to idle around 30, 40 kPa, 20 inches, close to 20 inches of vacuum, in between these cells here. So this is what the computer sees, vacuum or boost. So you'll be in idling and vacuum about here, about in between you know, 8 and 1500 RPM, about 800. And then here you, you can scale this to meet your demands. Uh, you know, I revved at like 6800, so I just cut it off at 7000. And this is easily edited. If you just click on the cell, you can change the resolution. It's pretty nice. So, what happens is when you drive around and accelerate, you're gonna see... It says it's right at about 100 now because there's no boost connected to the map sensor. If it was reading vacuum, it would be down here. But this is the real-time thing that swings around. I'll do some more videos where we show me actually driving and uh, what to do. But it's, it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, if the car is right here at 37, and it's warmed up and it's idling at like 16.0, if you hit this 37 here, you know, if you highlight these little four, and you go up top here and you hit down, what will happen is it will make the number smaller. Uh, what that will do is remove the amount of fuel and uh, it will go even leaner. It will go from like a 16 to an 18 depending on how much you take out. And the same with if you hit the up button, watch what happens, bump, bump, it will go up. It also has pretty neat features built in where you can right click and do anything in here. You can export and import a fuel table. A uh, nice one is scale. This is how you increase by percentage, which is pretty nice. If you hit scale, it brings up an option box. And if you type in like 0.9, what you're doing is you want, when you type in 0.9, it's using a multiplier. Like it even says here, multiply selected cells. 1.2 raises by 20%. So 0.9 takes 10% away. Uh, relatively easy math. And what you would do here is, Go to cancel. What you would do here is uh, if you were driving around in this particular area of vacuum in between 1500 and 3000 just driving in gear and this shit was like 11 air fuel everywhere you drive just too rich just retarded. You can go here and you can hit scale again and what you would do is you can type in about 0 0.8 and that'll take 20% of the fuel out that would give you, you know, it would go from 11s to maybe 13s, or it, it all depends, but that's relative. Like, I'd recommend jumping, especially in cruise, it's not that. If you're cruising and it goes to an 18 hour air fuel, the car ain't gonna explode. Yeah, I mean, it might buck and sound like shit and not make any power, but you're not gonna hurt it. So you can take 20% out, it'll work great. Uh, you know, you can figure out where you need to go. Also, what's nice is when you're when you start to come up uh, when you're first doing some initial tuning, like I'll show you guys in another video. When you roll into the gas pedal and you get up about 3,000 and it starts to build boost or so, like mine, and it's coming up in here and the car's like blah blah blah, running like a 90 air fuel. You can highlight this area quick, and I'd recommend taking out about five or ten percent until it's manageable, like a ten, you know, like a 1050 or 1080 to start. Low boost, you, you can stick around in the 12s. I would recommend. You know, like 12 out 12 5 and then as you get over 10 14 pounds you should be I like to shoot for an 11 0 on gasoline with methanol injection uh, my motors seem to love that and survive doesn't make any more power if I go to like a 12 0 but these are just some quick tips with connecting the box and using a little bit of the software I guess I can do I don't know how long I don't want to take too long in these videos 
like to not overwhelm anybody. <laughs> when the car is starting, you have cranking settings here, which cranking settings, uh, the prime table, this is how much it's pulsing the motor when you're cranking the motor, like by temperature. So when it's cold, it needs more fuel. So it actually sprays in more fuel. This is milliseconds of injector time opening. What you'll do is you'll start relatively low, maybe one or two, I would say, when the car's cold and you'll crank it. And if it doesn't want to start, you increase this number slowly and make sure, you know, you don't smell raw fuel rolling out of the exhaust pipe. Again, uh, like a bass tune from somebody is probably your best bet. Starting from scratch from the beginning is kind of difficult, but not impossible. I have some pretty good base maps for LS cars with 80 pound injectors. Uh, there's a ton of settings here, but they don't really mean too much. More cranking stuff. Basically the ECU is spraying a priming pulse until it sees the engine go over 200 RPM. That's what you set here. Because the motor cranks at about 140 RPM. Some other motors, smaller motors, probably crank a little faster. You know, you never know. But here is where it knows, like, LSX crank about 140 RPM, 150. So it knows when it crosses over 200, it has started. So what it does is it goes from the cranking table we saw before to the base map table up in here. The big air fuel map table. Hmm, 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 hmm. And then if we go back into another another nice one to know is like warm up wizard. What's happening here is when the coolant temp is lower, it actually needs more fuel. So this is a percentage adding. You'll notice once the car is warmed up and say you have, you know, 38 amount of fuel at idle and it's idling at a 13 0 air fuel. When you start it when it's cold and if this is even from warmth, uh, you'll notice the car is extremely lean. And you'll actually need to add, like, when you car start the car 40 degrees, let's see here. Uh, coolant temp, 40 degrees. It's actually adding 54% more fuel to, to maintain about a 13.0 or a low 12. Uh, sometimes I add a little bit more in, like a 12.0 when it's warming up. It seems to run better. That's all, depending on your engine and package and everything else. But then what happens is once it warms up, it slowly tapers down to 0%. It's not adding in any percentage then. And the motor's warmed up. And it's running fine. And then, uh, I guess that's pretty much all I'll cover for now. Uh, yeah, that should give you a big, a big hint, a big tip on how this works. What everything does. We'll see. You guys can give me some other suggestions in these videos. I'll probably make another one on an MSD box. The 6010 box that I use in conjunction with the MS1, uh, that'll get a lot of shit explained. And then probably the next video, we'll just show, uh, I'll go and start the car and show what happens and everything else. And then we'll see from there. You guys can give me some suggestions on what you want to see next. Hopefully sometime I can show some dyno video of tuning on the dyno or how, it, how you tune on the street. Or at least how I do it. I'm not telling anybody how to do stuff, but I'll at least show you how I do it with, uh, the limited success that I have. Alright, have a good one.